The water supply and demand model for the Chapman Water System guides the current water supply project planning and is often referenced in project reports when describing reductions to the water supply deficit. This model was updated in 2018 to include parameters that are having significant impacts on the water supply in recent years. Let's take a look at the balance of water supply and demand for the Chapman Water System. Starting with drought, the Chapman watershed requires a nice soggy week of rain to be replenished. In recent years, we have seen the period between large rain events increasing, as well as years like 2016 and 2017, when it was well into October and November before a large rain event arrived. This pattern of prolonged drought has been incorporated into the modeling and planning of the water supply moving forward. Also, the environmental flow need of Chapman Creek, first set by the province of BC in 2015, was adjusted upwards in 2017 to a continuous daily minimum flow of 200 litres per second to support numerous species in the creek, including juvenile and migrating salmonids. A quick note, this image of Chapman Creek is of higher than 200 litres per second flows. Um, it was taken in the fall. With changes to weather patterns and the increase to environmental flow needs, our community has been adapting to stretching the Chapman water supply further than in previous years. With the considerations of long dry summers and the needs of the ecosystem, here is the amount of water that has been modeled as available in the Chapman water system from spring to fall. Watershed contributions vary with our snowpack and rain. If it rains regularly during the summer, we can fill up the cylinder right to the top. However, for planning purposes, we assume dry conditions from May to October. In addition to the natural creek flows of the watershed, we have the storage capacities of Chapman Lake and Edwards Lake, each storing over 800 million litres of accessible water. Chaster Well is activated during the time of high demand as well, providing the Chapman users with 1 million litres of water each day. These sources add up to the current water supply of the Chapman water system during a dry summer. You'll notice Grey Creek is not included in the model, as the use of Grey Creek is under specific conditions and typically during stage 3 and 4 for a short period of time. So how does this compare to the water demand or the water needs of the Chapman system? To plan for community water needs looking forward, we consider how the population may change and how water use habits may change as well. Overall, the population has been increasing, while our water use per capita has been decreasing. Some of this decrease is due to more efficient fixtures and appliances in our homes. Our summertime per capita usage, in particular the maximum daily and maximum monthly demands, has seen the largest decrease, and this is the influence of water conservation regulations and community conservation efforts in recent years. These two factors have been working in op opposition, so overall, as our population has been increasing, our total water consumption has remained steady over time, and through necessity, even decreased in the summertime. Looking forward, continued population growth is expected and has been modeled at a rate of 2% per year. Using the expected values of per capita water usage for May through October, without Stage 3 or Stage 4 water conservation regulations, here is the expected need of the Chapman water system in the very near future. Aligning the demand of water use with the current supply illustrates the water supply deficit of the Chapman water system. To avoid stage 3 and 4 water conservation regulations during extended periods of dry weather, the Chapman water system requires an additional 2 billion litres of water between May and October. How do we erase this deficit to balance the supply and demand on the Chapman water system? This question often divides us in conversation as we choose one cylinder over the other. The SCRD is working on both of these cylinders, an integrated approach in the interests of cost, risk, sustainable operation, environmental impacts, community impacts, and project timelines. To reduce demand, rebates and 
conservation programs have been implemented using rainwater on our gardens and the promotion of a switch to efficient irrigation options has reduced our peak summer usage. We use less per person now than in 2010. And this has been included in the totals of our demand model. If we find further ways to practice conservation, this total demand will decrease. This summer, the Town of Gibsons began supplying water to their Zone 3. This takes a slice of Chapman water demand moving forward. The completion of universal metering will bring the next big slice in savings. Fixing leaks promptly means toilets and water lines will not be leaking undetected all summer long. The introduction of the access to water data um, via MySCRD accounts and volumetric rates are expected to bring further reductions. On the other side of the equation, supply, supply projects are in progress. Church Wellfield is scheduled for completion in summer 2021. And the Raw Water Reservoir project is progressing with a ge geotechnical review this summer. Also in 2020, additional sites of potential groundwater supply are being tested. Here is how it stacks up. New water supply projects are designed to erase the seasonal water supply deficit, while programs like universal water metering ensure efficient use of this water supply in the years to come. Looking ahead to 2050 and beyond, these cylinders may grow or change with new neighbors, new conservation strategies, and new water sources. For more information on SCRD water projects, please visit scrd.ca slash water. You can find the link below. Subscribe, send us your questions, and thank you to everyone who practices water conservation.